And he said to Simon, Put out into the deep and let down your nets for a catch. Simon answered, Master, we have toiled all night and took nothing. But at your word, I will let down the nets. And when they had done this, they enclosed a large number of fish and the nets were breaking. They signaled to their partners in the other boats to come and help them. And they came and filled both of the boats that, that they began to sink. But when Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. I want to begin by reiterating that every miracle is an epiphany. Every single one. Every miracle is an epiphany. And I particularly want to keep saying this because the little ones in our congregation, if they were anything like me, have no clue what an epiphany is. Because it's just another season in the church year and they hear it, but they don't understand the term. They, don't, they can't understand how epiphany and the church year go together. Even if they know the word epiphany, as, as in, I had an epiphany, they don't understand how it works within the church year. So I think, and I truly believe, that during the season of Epiphany, we have to continuously remind each other and our children and myself that the season of Epiphany is all about pointing to Christ as the Messiah. That's what the Epiphany is. Let's recap just a little bit. Even though in art, which you know that I, I love and am a nerd about, you find at Christ's nativity the wise men there with Jesus. But it didn't happen quite like that. It wasn't all on the same night like we like to think. Rather, they followed this star to Christ. And that star was the gospel to the Gentiles. That was what led the Gentiles, the Magi, the wise men to Christ. And then we go on from there, the wedding of Cana, where Christ does perform a miracle, but it seems almost like a pointless miracle. He just made more wine out of water. Of all the things that God can do, that was the first miracle. They've drank all of our wine, Lord, we need some new. And right there, we understand, we, can, we, we Lutherans can understand how simple wine can be turned from water or even bad wine into the good wine that is the body and blood of Christ. And how wonderful will it be when we hear, when we die and we hear the words, you have saved the best wine for last. It's an epiphany. Not that Jesus could do this. It's not a triple dog dare you savior. If you can do this, then do it. Let's see it. What do you got, Jesus? Entertain us. We're not talking about Houdini here. We're talking about the Savior of all mankind. And so, of course, He can do these things. Then we get to the walking on water. That's the biggest one that people like to reference, right? That Jesus walked on the water. So, isn't that really cool? That Jesus can walk on water. And my answer is no, it's not really cool. I mean, when you create the water, certainly you could walk on it any time that you want. The point was that people saw him do it. And who were the ones who saw him do it? Who were the ones who saw him make the water into wine at Cana? Who were the ones who saw him uh, feed the 5,000? Who were the ones who saw him walk on the water? The disciples, the apostles, the ones who would come to know him as the Messiah. And that's the whole point of Epiphany. That he does, he does these miracles so that you may believe. 
that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. And I use this example a lot of times. And I use it recently. What happened? If, if, if we are to take the miracles as the penultimate or the top thing that Christ did outside of the crucifixion, then I would have to ask this. What happens to the blind man that Christ allowed to see? What happened to the dumb whose tongues were loosened? What happened to the crippled and lame, and lame that Christ fixed, that he healed? What happened to the paralytic who took up his mat and walked away? What happened to all of these people that Christ miraculously healed? They're dead. They are dead. These miracles didn't save their, didn't save their lives to all eternity here on earth, but rather each one of those miracles were done in the sight of those who would later confess who Christ is. It pointed to Christ as the Messiah. At every miracle, you could put the star of David in the sky to point to Him as the Savior. And in our text here, we have the exact same thing. Here in this text, we find that Christ has already done miracles and now He has gone to the lake of Gennesaret where He saw two boats and Simon Peter washing the nets after a fairly unsuccessful night. Christ comes in to the picture and this is, and this is where it gets pretty interesting. He takes the boat and he puts it off into the water with him standing in it. Then he sits. Now, Scripture does not tell us whether he asked or not. He just gets in the boat, pushes off, so that the people can hear him. In other words, that boat in that water was a megaphone so that everyone could hear what Christ had to say. And what does Christ have to say? After He had talked, He says, and when He had finished speaking, He said to Simon, put out into the deep and let down your nets for a catch. And then Simon Peter says to Christ, in sort of in, in the negative. Master, we have toiled all night and we have got nothing. But if you say to us, for us to let down the nets, we will do so. Now, here's where it gets interesting. Christ was still in the boat. Christ was still there in the boat. So Simon Peter, who had just finished washing his nets, took his nets and went into the boat with Jesus. And then according to our words here, went throw out into the deep. They launched out together. And then Christ gives the command, now I want you to picture this, the boat out in the lake of Gennesaret. Christ and Simon out on the boat and he throws over the net saying we've caught nothing but if you say so we'll do it again and so he does it and he catches so much fish that they had to call someone else from shore over to help them bring the fish on board to, to the point to where they were sinking God gave such grace to Simon that it almost killed him. But here's the interesting part, and this is where you really come in. When Simon Peter saw the fish 
and he saw what Christ was able to do with the fish. He, it says literally, he fell down on his knees to Jesus and says this. Depart from me, for I am a sinful man. In other words, the epiphany worked. He knew that Christ was the Messiah and it really freaked him out. He backed up and he said, Away from me, for I am a sinful man. But there's only one catch. No pun intended. They were both in the same boat. So how far are you going to get away? Away from me, for I am a sinful man. And you're literally three feet from each other in the same boat, out in the deep. How much is this like us when we are in need of Christ? And even when we're not in need of Christ. How often do we ask, how can God forgive the sins that we have sinned? The deep, dark-seated sins that we don't want anyone to know about. Those, that, those things that plague us. Sins of every type. There is not a commandment that we don't break every single day. We break all ten every single day. Multiple times, in fact. And if we were to stand in front of God, our judgment would be that we would be destroyed. If it were not for Christ, and if it were not in a boat. Now, when was the last time that you saw a boat sailing away, saving the lives of some while bringing others to death? Noah's Ark. There in that boat, the people were saved. By water, they were saved. By water, they were put to death. And so is the same thing for us here in baptism. We are put to death by the water, and we are brought up by the water. Because the Word of God is spoken in and with the water. Well, here is Simon in the boat with Christ. And he goes out there hoping for basically for a raise. If Jesus can get me more fish, that's great. But what he found was immeasurably more. Immeasurably more. Because he goes out there and they get the fish and all of a sudden the fish become very secondary. Because he realizes, just like that, this is the Messiah. And if he knows anything from his Hebrew training, he needs to get as far away from the Messiah as possible. Far away from the presence of God as possible. But here's the thing, he can't. Because he's in the same boat as Christ. No matter how much he wants to get away from Christ, he simply can't do it. And all around him is what? Water. The means of grace. So even if he were to jump into the water from the boat that Christ was in, he would just be baptized. In other words, Christ has locked him into that boat to where he has no choice but to have his sins forgiven. He's locked you into that same predicament. Try as you might, you are baptized. You are in the boat with Christ. And from time to time, and by time to time, I mean at least every single Sunday, we say, away from me, Lord, for I am a sinful man. And then we realize we're in the same boat. And we're not getting away from it. Because Christ says, no. I will not go away from you. Not now and not ever. In other words, you're stuck with Jesus. 
And that's okay. I think that'll be all right. Because that gives us the sure and certain hope that we are not afraid, but rather that in the presence of God, in the presence of Christ, even when we want to escape into a sinful life, we always return with these words, away from me, I am a sinful man. And Christ calls us and calls to us. You know what? You're right. You are sinful men. That's why I'm here. And that's why you're in this boat. If you weren't, you wouldn't need to be in the boat at all. But instead of leaving you in your sinful state, He forgives and He says, Upon what you have witnessed, you shall proclaim to other men that they may be like fish and be caught up in the net and brought into the boat of the church. And that's exactly what happens. Here we find the net. And here we find the feast. You've all been caught in the water of holy baptism. What is left is that we partake of the one that tries and might we can't get away from. We're all in the same boat of the church. And we will feed on its captain, Christ, the Son of the living God. Amen.